Hey everyone, you're listening to The Public Affair with me, Andrew G. I see someone different every episode, but do me a favor, keep it between us. Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Andrew G, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Public Affair. Of course, before we continue, I definitely wanna use this opportunity to thank Mike and Allison at Rogue Media Network for all this time. We're like a whole little system now. We're just coming in here, it's like a, it's like a show. Like a, anyway, <laughs> and of course, I want to thank all everybody who t- continues to tune into the public affair. Um, everybody that continues to subscribe, share an episode. You guys are the best. Thank you all so much. I truly appreciate you. Before we continue with these very special guests that I'm so excited to finally have onto the show together. I definitely want to use this opportunity to give a shout out to just a few of our sponsors of this episode of The Public Affair. This episode is brought to us by Four Brothers Construction with my boy Joe Overa, who provides custom home designs and renovations. He also focuses on roofing, remodeling, plumbing, tree removal, electrical work, and much, much more. Joe and his entire team of men are building affordable dream homes for you. I can't wait for them to build that shower that they said I can watch them build and possibly toss. Call the number on the screen with Four Brothers Construction, my boy Joe Overa. Thank you so much for being a longtime sponsor, bro. I truly appreciate you. Of course, the B&J refinishing with my boy Frank Biza. He focuses on resurfacing bathtubs, counters, sinks, tiles, and more to original showroom quality. He offers five-year warranty on most work and has the best prices in town, darling. He also has inflatables, a mechanical bull, margarita machines, tables, chair, a foam machine, and so much more, making all your parties super-duper lit. My boy Frank is out there doing the thing, and he's been a long-time sponsor of the show. Truly appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much. Oh, of course, to my bro, David Santabanez with Alinea Real Estate. Uh, excuse me. He's the number one sales agent in his office at Alinea Real Estate to help you buy a home or sell your property. Make sure you Follow him on Facebook at David with a linear. Call the number on the screen, darling. For all your real estate needs, my boy David is out there doing the thing. We just had a really, really great event at the 2022 Back to School Bash. It was so much fun. Thank you so much for all you do for me, bro. I truly appreciate you. Oh, my goodness. If you guys haven't gone, of course, the Pee Wee's Crab Cakes of Texas with Anika Armstrong, serving the most authentic Cajun cuisine, darling, with a wide selection of signature crab cakes, pasta, seafood, and more. Now, my favorite is the crabby seafood pasta, which I love rolling around in, but their top recommended is the Southern Fried Catfish Special served with seafood pasta, potato salad, and six fries. Fried shrimp, the fish is top of who that sauce. I'm not telling you what it is. You gotta head over to 108 Gym Drive in Hewitt or we'll order online at order peewees crab cakes of Texas.com. To my girl Anika, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode and being a long time sponsor. I truly appreciate you, girl. And of course, to Waco fencing and stuff with my boy Juan Morales. Now, Juan builds privacy fences and chain link fences, darling. Perfect for all that extra at home privacy. He also builds wood decks, stone patios, and gorgeous flower beds, darling. Contact him with the number on the screen for your consultations. To my boy Juan Morales, thank you so much for being a long time sponsor and all you do for me. I truly, truly really appreciate you. And of course, we can't go on without thanking Mr. Enrique Jimenez with Jimenez Bakery. Oh, a local bakery specializing in a wide selection of fresh and affordable pan dulces. Also, the best tres leches cake for your party or for yourself. The mocha tres leches is for me. I love rolling around in it. Also, get a cup of fresh elote if you have a different type of craving, darling. Locations at 1915 Dutton in Waco and 302 West Elm Street in Hillsboro. To my boy, Enrique, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair with Jimenez Bakery. I truly appreciate you, bro. All right, guys. So like I said, I've been really, really excited to have this next guest back onto the show. I knew that when he came back, I wanted his wife to come back because I loved them so much, both of them so much. I didn't think the wife was going to be down, you know. <laughs> I didn't know if this was her cup of tea, but of course she agreed because we've met plenty of times and she knows I have nothing but the best intentions. I would love to welcome back to the public affair Adrian Fajardo from episode <laughs> six and his gorgeous wife, darling. Cece Fajardo is here with him. How you doing? Good. Doing really good. Adrian, don't be acting like you've never been on the show before. Okay? I, Why are you acting so shy? Andrew, you're just doing a great job. I'm just, um, I'm just so impressed. I'm like, man. Thank you. Oh, girl. you know what? Because when you came on the show, we didn't have that many um, sponsors. <laughs> I think we only had like, what, two or something? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And now I have too much to keep up with. Yeah. I have, that, I have a, a whole system now. It's crazy. Yeah. I, it's a blessing. Absolutely. It yeah. is. Yeah. All so, right. no, I'm really, I'm really, first of all, and thank you, Cece, for coming. I really didn't think you were going to be down. I'm not going to lie. Well, <laughs> okay. I, I know you're, you'd be perfect for the show. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Well, because you know what I like about you guys is that you guys are obviously a very strong couple, um, you know, from what I see and what I've always envisioned that you guys have this really really great way about yourselves with like staying above the fray and you guys are never mixed into any of the mess that other couples are mixed into and I just I always want to be y'all you know what I mean (laughs) and you guys are powered by faith is what I like to say but you're still like really urban and it's like cute you know what I mean and and I love it like you fit in with us but you're different it's just that's just me I don't know and and, you know with Adrian I had you on the show on episode six um, and we got really deep on that episode which, which I really appreciate. You got really deep about your family and some things that I went through and definitely revel some feathers, darling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but I, I always say when people ask me what my favorite episode to record, I'm not even like fronting. When people ask me what my favorite episode to record was, I love every single episode that I've done, every single one, but yours always struck the most with me, for sure. Episode yeah. six to this day, two years later. So yeah. just had to tell you that since you're here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. My yeah. 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 No, yeah. for real, yeah. So how do you feel about being back? 
Well, I feel I feel great, and I think that we both have grown a lot since then. Oh yeah, uh, and so I think that I've what I've experienced is that people keep coming up to me after two years. How mm -hmm. that podcast not only just it just it, it really impacted them, which really? was really one of one of one of my goals when I came is like how can I impact other people right, right. through a podcast with Andrew? So that yeah. was great. Yeah, well, thank you. I think that's really great that people have resonated so well. I mean, obviously, a lot of people watched it, and I mean, I mean, what did what did you first think when Adrian told you he was coming onto the public affair? I mean, did you even know about it because we were still fresh? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I, and I think the last five you were episode six, right? And yeah. so my five episodes before that was very salacious. Yeah. You know I mean? so, so, did you have any reservations at first? I'm curious, or were you just like, oh, you should um, do this? Too? I mean, I just thought it was cool, like. Uh -huh. Um, I mean, he gets invited to stuff, but uh -huh. I think that was. Um, one of the like, very like one of the first times she's like, "Hey, I'm on a podcast." Okay. It's like, oh, okay, that's that's different. That's cool. Yeah, you know? for sure. It was it was nice. It was really cute the way it all went down too, because like I I was originally getting Angelo, your brother Angelo, yeah. onto the yeah. show, and yeah. he was supposed to be episode two, and then you know we started this show in the middle of COVID, so, yeah. <laughs> so everybody didn't want to come on the show. You know, mm -hmm. I was like biting and scratching for guests, and I always had to talk to Adrian. Adrian was like the middle guy. Yeah. And then I, and then so when he uh, we had to cancel because of that, and then I said. Well, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. like, you, you want to come on? I mean, you're in that family, too. You know what I mean? Why don't you come on in? So, yeah. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to meet with you. Man, really that, and that's yeah. and that's a great point that you came up with. Yeah. And, you know, like, and that inspired me because you brought that out of me. Yeah. Because I was like, man, I do have a story, too. Right. But you're like, Adrian, what are you doing? And yeah. I'm like, all right, well, it's, yeah. just come on the show. I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go on the show. Well, it's true because, you know, it's, it's no secret. And I wanted to get into you specifically with you about it. Um, your your family had that, that name going around for a long time. I mean, it had quite the reputation in the past, obviously. Yeah. We talked about it on the show. And, you know, um, and we all love, I love Angela. I love your dad, too. I had them both on the show, which was an experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that was, yeah, um, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but, um, okay, which I love them both. But yeah, I was like, you know, um, you're a Fajardo. You went through the possibly the same things, maybe not as intense, but you still went through your own, you know, thing. I was like, yeah, let's get you on there. You know what I mean? It's about inviting the underdog, and that's what I did. And it ended up being like one of the greatest episodes I've ever recorded. So thank yeah. you. And, and shout out to Angelisa, who was in the back there just being patient the whole 45 <laughs> minutes. Okay, you can see her in the background just flipping through the magazine. It was really cute. I watched it last night. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Um, God, you know, I, I just uh, I've lost so much weight. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> So, um, you know, why don't we start by introducing you guys. So for anybody who may not watch episode six, Adrian, of course, let's start with you. Um, introduce yourself to us and a little bit about you. And then we'll move on to Cece, of course, because we got to get to know Cece on the show. <laughs> yeah. Well, so first off, um, I am a husband. We've been married for going on three years, which is really great. Uh, it's been it's been wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I'm a new father. We just had our two. She's two months old now. Oh, you just had the baby. We just had the baby, yeah. and so I'm, I can call myself a father now. <laughs> uh, and I am also a an associate pastor now. Oh, really? But yeah, I'm an associate. That's my oh. that's my title, associate pastor. Oh, okay. And also, I am a mentor coordinator too. So that's another title that I was put on me so i'm uh -huh. i'm really grateful mm -hmm. are you still um working at school or you don't do it anymore Is yeah that so i am still working at the school district okay, okay. um I'm, I'm going back and they gave me a new role to it's kind of like a up in the air kind of role kind of got to make it up as i go oh okay which is exciting there you go it's challenging yeah. but it's exciting so that's a new role that I'm gonna be in. That's how you know they like you is when they make up a role for you. Yeah, <laughs> you just for make real. your own rules, and then this is what's going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean honestly, and when I would tell people, they're like, "Hey, what do you, you? You're not gonna go back and be a teacher?" And I'm like, "No, I'm not gonna go back and be a teacher. I'm kind of. Mm. I, I didn't know how to explain to people what I wanted to do. Right, right. So they just kind of created a job for me. Right. Like, Side note, you know um, Jerry Dancer, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Tell him to stop playing come on the show. Man. <laughs> I've been trying to get Jerry on for about a year already. Okay? Jerry, Jerry Dancer, come on the come show, Come on, man. tell him it's not that bad. Tell him I don't bite, I promise. Yeah. I, know, I know when I can do these things. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> and, and Cece, what about you? Can you introduce yourself to us, please, a little bit about you and all that, growing up and all that? So, um, growing up and all that? Well, okay, well, why don't we just start with who you are? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Um, yeah. So, I'm Cece. Hey. Um, I taught, um, I was a teacher. I'm mm. going to be a stay at home mom. Oh. Yeah. So oh, wow. <laughs> a lot okay. different. Um, yeah. So I'll be home with the baby. Mm. Um, motherhood has been the hardest thing <laughs> I've ever done. Really? Yes. Okay. It is tough, but there's so much joy. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Like, so, what was your life growing up? I mean, were you, are you from here in Waco or? Yeah. So, I grew up. 
around um, South 29. Mm -hmm. I grew up on South 29th oh, okay. and then Ross. So yeah. a lot of my early years are on those streets. Is um, that South Waco? Is that what that is? Yeah, South okay. Waco. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. And, and so what the crazy thing is that she grew up on South 29th Street and uh. I grew up right behind her on the same street. Oh, really? Yeah. So, and then she moved to Hewitt uh -huh. and we moved to Hewitt around the same time. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so... But, you know, her dad and my dad's stories are completely different. <laughs> I was going to ask. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to let her explain yeah, a little more. Okay. <laughs> About my dad? Yeah, just go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah, my dad grew up in the projects. He uh -huh. was um, just bouncing back and forth from Waco to Houston oh, okay. in the housing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, he but he just worked his butt off and... Mm. Um, he drives the big semis, the big semi eighteen wheeler. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so he's do he does that, and so he really just came out of that poverty and um, just got us out too. Oh, okay, uh, gotcha. Yeah, I was gonna say growing up in that type of environment. I mean, housing projects and all that. How did you not turn out to follow <laughs> suit? Do you know you know what I mean? No, because that's what happens. And, well, you know, I didn't grow up in them. Oh, but, but your dad did. My dad did. Okay, gotcha. Um, but we did. I did grow up on Ross, mm -hmm. and that's when. Um, I was about five years old yeah. and my mom was pregnant with my sister mm -hmm. and there was a drive by. Oh, wow. So our house got shot up and, um, the, it was just bullets oh. everywhere. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That was scary. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, so that's, th that's the reason we moved to moved Hewitt. To Hewitt, right? That's yeah. Not, my I mean, dad was really like, nope, anymore. we're going. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, yeah. We're going to give it a shot, but forget <laughs> about it. Okay, yeah. We liked it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, growing up for you um, individually, I mean, with your dad doing all that, was there any hardships for you or anything? Or uh, was it a pretty good idea that you were pulled out of there so quick? Um, you know, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> No, he, I think my parents did really great. That's they good. did a great job. Yeah, yeah. Um, despite, you know, that event. Mm -hmm. um, my mom did go through like postpartum depression yeah. with all of us. So yeah, sure. she had a lot of anger. Okay. And, um, but I think she did the best that she could. Yeah. No. You know, like that stuff is, this stuff is not a joke. <laughs> no, no. Well, uh, you know, I'm honest, I'm happy that you brought that up, honestly, because you're a new mother. Okay. Yeah. And, and, um, uh, a good friend of mine is a new mother as well. And, um, you know, when we talk about, like, it kind of falls into mental health, like, as yeah. Latinos, and we're not really, like, allowed to acknowledge that and all that and whatever. Uh, with postpartum, um, is it something that you as a new mother are dealing with right now, too? And um, I'm not right now, okay. I wouldn't say. Um, but the first two weeks, I know the first week, we mm -hmm. were in the hospital for four days. Yeah. Um, just different factors with the baby. But um, after that, the first week at home is yeah. when it was really like, I was just like crying all the time. Right, right. Couldn't control it. Um, just different thoughts. Um, I didn't have any thoughts about harming the baby, which is what my mom had. My oh, mom okay. had thoughts of that, but right. um, I did have thoughts of like, um, like regarding myself, like, okay. oh, I'd, it would be better if I died. Like, oh, wow, you know, okay. like yeah, stuff yeah. like that. So um, it's what it's weird how that happens to a woman's, body right like and, yeah. and so how did how did you handle all that i mean in the beginning because I'm, I'm sure it's different you know what i mean and i yeah. again like i said i just had saw it for the first time and i was like this is nuts but it's yeah it so true happen it's so to true. anyone yeah anytime. yeah for sure and i think that was the one of the most hurtful things that i could have like really experienced to see like my wife in mm -hmm. pain yeah yeah and i think that that's what was bringing me pain mm -hmm. was the fact that I couldn't do anything for her. Right. And so she was coming to me, but it's like, man, I don't know the woman experience in that. I yeah. can't understand that. Right, um, right. And so until she was starting to open up to other women, they were able to be able to relate to her. Oh, okay. Because I yeah. couldn't really, I couldn't yeah. really do and that. And now it's more of, um, I'll have temptations. Like right. those thoughts will kind of kind come up yeah mm -hmm. not as much as they were that first week but right. um it'll be just randomly like yeah it'll be like crazy so it's do you just, do you find solace in um like a group the group of women that you've talked to about it and stuff like that or um i've actually just more recently just confided in adrian oh, but, okay. um yeah because it hasn't it wasn't like that the right. first couple weeks it, it's yeah. more just random and 
you know, we'll pray about it or. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, I, I got to spend the night at their house one time. Remember that big giant snowstorm that we had? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Homeless for like a week. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so the next day, you know, um, I, I noticed the first thing that you did when you woke up was you read the Bible. You know, yeah. wait, I, I, listen, I just did not grow up like that. So yeah. it was different for me. Okay. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't either. Yeah, I, I didn't either. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. Didn't. So how did you start that? Because I, it was just weird. Like, I mean, does that kind of like set the tone for your day? Or like, what was what did the decision to do that come from? Um, Really? Seeing him. Oh, really? Seeing him do uh-huh. that faithfully every day. And so it's just a, a habit now. Um, uh-huh. But like being a mom. Right all the time goes to the baby it is hard <laughs> yeah, it's sure. harder um but so you can't <laughs> really get up and to... ride the bi- read the bible anymore no <laughs> <laughs> well you tried to I, at least i do <laughs> i get so i used to get a lot of reading done in one sitting oh, one yeah. day you know mm-hmm. in the morning now it's like Go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give her some melatonin, yeah. like some NyQuil. <laughs> no, no so, it's just Sometimes it's just me can. reading it to her. <laughs> yeah, for oh, real. Oh, that's good, though. Okay, yeah, so sometimes you... it's him reading it. Yeah. Um... We're still trying to find some middle ground. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I need to start doing that, too. You know, I have a Bible at my house. Oh, I really yeah? do. It has my name engraved in it and everything. Nice. One awesome. day, just open. Did you, do you just open it up and read whatever's there? Or do you, like, mm. Um, I used to do that when okay. I was, like, teenager now <laughs> it's more um i'm doing actually a bible in a year plan with oh, got you. some ladies on facebook and instagram oh good i don't know who's really doing it <laughs> 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 they're, they're lying right they're just googling bible verses that's gonna be me i'm gonna i'm gonna get up one day and just open it it's gonna go to the part with leviticus or what's the part where i'm going to hell oh, 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 oh man <laughs> well there's this tone for the day <laughs> it's gonna get republic here i come <laughs> no kidding okay you know what um can we talk i i, I I really have always been intrigued about your relationship beginnings, okay? Only because of like, I, I've known of Adrian's past because obviously we talked about it, mm-hmm. okay? And then I got to know a little bit about you. So when you guys first met, okay, what was that experience like for you guys as, as a couple? Because, you know, the, the Fajardos, uh, first of all, before I say this, y'all come a long way. Mm-hmm. I'm so proud of every one of you. For, I just, re- I ran into your dad, you know, I broke my foot. And um, I believe his wife and I had the same doctor. Oh. Yeah, yeah, so I saw him over. I was crutching. I was, uh, I was a hot mess. Okay. <laughs> and, and I'm so happy to see that he still looks vibrant and well and healthy. You know what I mean? Yeah. But back right. in the day, you guys definitely had the rep, the name. You know what I mean? Yeah, like everybody yeah. knew. You know, everybody you didn't Google it. You know, so yeah. I guess when y'all first got together, was that something that you were a little standoffish about in the beginning? Or like, oh, no, this family's a little mad. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, when she first met me, I had, a, I had gold teeth. I had. had did you grill. really? Yeah, you had, had a grill. had a grill on top and bottom. So she liked the bad boys. Huh? <laughs> you, you, were you one of those? <laughs> like no. secretly, she was. Like, <laughs> I don't know how she like liked me. I was like, right. I, did you have a grill? Did he have a grill for real? He, he did, did have a grill. He, I, I need a picture. I need to see that. He might still have it. I don't yeah. know. Oh, okay. Nah, I, I give it, give it I to give the baby. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that what really made me like like her is that I asked, I was like, Cece, do you like my grill? Yeah. And she wasn't into all that. Right. And she yeah. was like, Not Cece. Man. No. She was like, and it don't matter to me as long as you're happy. Oh, okay. And I was like, oh, shoot. Oh, that's pretty cool. different. Yeah, it was want, different. How did you guys meet? Was it in Hewitt or was it in the South Waco? <laughs> and were you there when all that happened behind the house? <laughs> uh, a lot of questions. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, first of all, how'd you meet? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we met at the South Waco Recreation Center. So um, he, I was working there. Okay. So I had a lot of friends who worked there. But then, um, you know, I moved. I got a different job. So uh-huh. then he started working there. Yeah. So we had the same friends. Oh, okay. And so we really we were really just friends first, which right, right. I definitely recommend if you're trying to get into a relationship. Is be that friends a thing? first. Be friends first. Is that okay? Man. I thought it was yeah. I thought it was the best. I, mean, I was uh-huh. not used to that though. She right. would like really friends on me. Okay. And I'd be like, <laughs> Man, I'm not used to that. So but, you were used to girls always just flocking at you. Well, what I mean, yeah. 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 Was, we all know about the past. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We're, we're I mean redemption. honestly, but like that's what made me like, man. I really like this girl because she keep friends on me. She really just want to be oh, my friend. Oh, God. And that's cool. You know what I, I mean? I would have dusted you a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Forget that. I, you know, I don't date. I've already made the decision that I'm not dating. Oh, yeah? And I'm, I, I don't know how I can still be gay because I don't want to date 
gay guys anymore. I just, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm just gonna be lonely my whole life. Oh, I just, man. I need my fans to stick around. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, so, so she, she, she was friend zoning you all the time. So how persistent were you being in the beginning? Or? Well, I mean, I was pretty persistent. Because you had the grills. And yeah, stuff. I had the grills. <laughs> and, and I had the, something called the slab, the Buick. And I, I had the speakers. I had everything, man. Wait, you used to have the loud, like, what Jeffrey puts in, wants to put in my car speakers? Like, yeah, that, yeah, that kind of speakers. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Stacey, what the hell? Um, Stay away. Exactly. <laughs> right? yeah. Yeah. Stay away, exactly. Okay. Not no, I saw the real him. I, it, yeah, she did see the real me. Yeah, yeah okay, I okay. saw it was on the inside. It was, yeah. Oh, that makes it feel good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, yeah. okay. So, so you were obviously, like, you know, at, at that time when you guys had met, because I think when we when we talked about you in your beginning of your life, um, when you were in college, is when you started experimenting with drugs and drinking and all that. Yeah. Um, and so were you still going through that when you met CC or yeah honestly man I, I and I really got into a real big deep depression when I got with her and that sounds oh, kind of wow. weird mm -hmm. because I never seen anything stay around in my life uh, and so I kind of felt like man she's just gonna go ahead and and bounce out of my life too so I'd rather hurt her first mm -hmm. than her hurt me first mm -hmm. oh okay and so it was more of like I didn't I wanted to be with her, but uh -huh. then I really didn't. He was scared. Really? And so okay. I really kept trying to break it off with her. Like, man, I don't think it's a right idea for you to be with me. Oh, really? Yeah. And so. She, yeah, right. yeah, no, girl. So, what, what, what made you keep me like, no, stay, like, come back? Like, you know, was, well, I knew how he really felt about me. Mm. So. Was yeah. that God? That was God telling you that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm not playing for real. So God tells me things all the time, and he's right. And so, yeah. <laughs> well, it's crazy because. I had like five goals that I was looking for in a girl. Okay, okay. And my sister was the one that was really saying, hey, bro, <laughs> this girl got all five of your goals. <laughs> really? And I was like, man, you're right. Yeah. And she was like, this could be something good. And I'm like, oh, man, this probably could be something good, you know? Oh, wow. Yeah. And, so, and that whole night, I couldn't sleep. And I knew it was yeah. God doing something mm. in the midst of me not sleeping. I was like, man, I know the Lord is calling me. Yeah. And before that, he wasn't talking to me. Oh, wow. Yeah, was that... he leaving you on red? Well, we didn't have all <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay. Yeah. I was like, I even told my friends that night, I'm I'm done. I'm not going to try anymore. Right, right. And then that, that same night, he was just blowing up my phone. And I wake up in the morning, like all these all the messages, messages, calls. Yes. And I'm like, okay, well, what happened? Were you, were you feeling yourself, though? You were a little bit like... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna let it go just a little bit longer. <laughs> you know, honestly, and that's what she did. She oh, friends on me again. I can't. You see, this is why I'm single. I can't. I don't have time for the games. Like, exactly. I don't. I don't. She friends on me again at that time, and I was like, "What the yeah. heck?" But that's when I was like, "Oh crap! It's gonna make. It's gonna take some time." Can I just? <laughs> can I share my coup de grace real quick? Just, just because it's funny because you said that. Um, I had the last person that I really tried to like. Okay, this is actually gonna be something, right? Like yeah. we're gonna be together type stuff. <laughs> Texted me the next day. My friends make fun of me all the time. They know the story. I'm not going to get into it because it's not about you. But uh, texted me and said, you're doing too much. And basically, like, he's doing it for me. You don't have a job. You don't have a car. I have to go pick you up. Okay? Mm -hmm. I have an award-winning show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. And a full time, like, get out of here. That's why I was like, I don't have time for this anymore. Yeah. Um, what do you guys do to... to I mean, so obviously you were still, you were going through your depression and whatever. You text Cece, um, blow her up. How, first of all, how many times did he call you? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. You know how you, like, scroll... You know, it, was uh, it wasn't times. that much. Oh, yeah. it was. Yeah, so wait, were you, were you, was, at, Adrian? Were you at home Text. talking about? Come on, please. Come on, please. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It was late at night, and I was like, "Man, I gotta make sure. I gotta give her a call. I gotta do this." Oh wow! She did not answer that one time that night. <laughs> I was asleep. Was I was asleep. asleep. Okay, yeah. so then how long did it take for you to actually call him? Like, I think back? the right when I woke up. <laughs> And I was at working at Starbucks at the time, oh, and I yeah. seen that she texted. Okay. So I went to the restroom and opened it up. And, she, and it was not what I expected. I yeah. was like, what? Come get you a coffee, girl. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's cool. You know, um, gosh, did you guys ever have to deal with any, um, I guess, trying times? And you really, because obviously you had your past, right? And then you, you, you seem like you didn't have, like, your past wasn't that traumatic yeah, from yeah. I'm sure things happen you know yeah. what I mean but I'm sure nobody raided your house you know yeah, I mean? yeah, so, yeah. so um, I, just I, shot it up you know yeah, well yeah. <laughs> yeah no but I guess you know with you going through what you have gone through and then meeting somebody like Cece or, or you meeting somebody like that, how did you guys find middle ground to I guess keep a strong relationship with each other and change because obviously from what you guys are telling me it sounds like you completely 360 you know, you ain't coming here with no grills and sagging pants. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, the, and then you've always just seemed like you've been well kept to me. You know what I mean? Just put together. And I, I we think had a lot of differences at first. Mm -hmm. It was his, you know, I grew up in Hewitt most of, 
um, my life, and right. he was South Waco most of his life. So it was very, it was different. It was different. Yeah, okay. it was two different cultures. But yeah. I yeah. think that what really, really started to change us because we had a very difficult relationship at first. Yeah, it was really hard. Yeah. It was to the point of being toxic. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. And and I think that when there was a friend who came and just prayed with us, uh-huh. and yeah. she was sent emails after emails just praying for us it oh, was like wow. almost like she was an angel to us oh. and she and she like really saw the potential of what we could possibly be as a mm-hmm. relationship and mm-hmm. it was because of those prayers mm-hmm. is the reason why that we started to like man we can trust each other more or mm-hmm. man we can we can actually move forward and not and not be so focused on our past, but actually move forward with our relationship. For sure. Yeah. And so that was great. Did you ever hear, like, you know, this is a small <laughs> town. So were people ever in your ear talking about, ooh, girl, don't get with him. Like, you know, he's he got that little past. You know what I mean? Or he's, he's a roach. Yeah. You know, don't, don't do all that. You no, know? actually, I got the opposite. Really? Especially, like, some of his family members that I knew. Uh-huh. Um, I knew a couple of his cousins before. Yeah. Um, we got together. But, um, yeah, they were saying, oh, he's a great guy. Aww. Yeah, they would always tell me like, "Oh, you got a good one," you know. So, <laughs> and yeah. I hear the same thing about Cece, which was which is great. I mean, <laughs> we didn't really know too much about each other. Yeah, for sure. Really good. For sure. When you when you mentioned that the the relationship, I can just ask this real quick, and then we gotta take a break. But when you mentioned that the relationship almost got to the point where it was toxic for each other, I mean, were, were you dealing with like trust issues and stuff like that, or what was really going on? Yeah, I think it had a lot to do with like insecurities, mm-hmm. not really being confident in ourselves, and really bringing all of our past relationship problems mm-hmm. into our, this problem. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. And that's something that you cannot do when we oh. had to learn Yeah, that. that almost broke us. Like, oh, wow, oh really? you're going to be like him or yeah. okay. I'm going to be like, you know. Had you had been like cheated on before by other men and stuff like that? or with, um, You know, I don't trust yeah. anybody, so I don't. I, don't. <laughs> I, I have, but mm. uh, I've also cheated on someone too. Oh, okay, got gotcha. you. Um, yeah, just more but, of the, I don't know, like. Just getting hurt. Okay, type got thing, you. Yeah. Well, I think that for me, you know, one of the biggest things for me was I got left by my ex, mm-hmm. and she had left and had got married and got pregnant, and this oh, was wow. all when I was when I was very young. Yeah, and so I would continuously say, "Man, she's gonna do the same thing," or oh. whenever she would like not respond as quickly i automatically think oh man she's gonna do the same thing and so i would just automatically just compare it right there and then okay and it was destroying our relationship because i kept bringing that past into us wow i i have to like um really rethink about this relationship thing now for me personally (laughs) it it sounds like you know with with all the insecurities that you guys are doing with with each other that's why i didn't want to be in a relationship anymore because i feel like i can't trust anybody yeah you know what i mean like everybody does the same thing it's a joke you know um so yeah were were you open with adrian about you know what you had done you know i guess as far yeah okay yeah and was it red flags or no not for me i think because i could see her heart Uh and I was open to a lot to her too. And I think that's a big deal when we're being truthful with each other. Like, man, look, this is what I did. And this is what she did. Lay it all on the table. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. And kind of just lay it out there. And now it's like, um, now we have like boundaries, like stuff we know we're not okay with, Mm. um, you know, just like no Snapchat. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, no, no. I know a guy whose girlfriend left him the minute he created a Snapchat. Oh, wow. All, like her little, all her little yeah. goons Snapchatted his Snapchat and sent it to her, and she said, pack your stuff when you get to that. Well, I so think the, the boundaries the boundaries are important, though. You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? And I really, one thing that I, I just know what, what Cece doesn't like, and she mm. doesn't like when I'm not trusting her. Mm. So I got to be able to work. And I, if how am I, how am I really going to... How am I really loving her if I'm not really trusting her? Yeah, for you know sure. what I mean. And so, like, that's one thing that's really irks her is that I get to be able to just trust her. Mm. Whatever she says, I'm trusting. Okay. And so, letting her yes be a yes, and, and I'm trusting in that yes, <laughs> right. whatever that is. For sure. So what, what? So, what irks you about Cece? <laughs> <laughs> if she yes. go ahead, you tell. Yeah. Wait, what? She, he aired you. <laughs> no, he said one thing that um, irks you is when you feel like he's not. Where, you're, where he feels like you're not trusting him is what no no said. well no when I'm not trusting up. her well, you're not trusting her yeah. okay yeah <laughs> so what about the, what about the opposite are you <laughs> so you're asking Adrian I'm asking you what irks you yeah. about what? yeah 
I, I, I got that mixed up. I'm sorry. No, what, what, what irks you that what I do to what? Uh, right, like, you, know, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hold on, let, maybe we should just move on. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna take a quick break because okay, we need it. Um, and while we take the quick break, we're gonna drink. Oh, well, I finished my delicious tea. Um, oh, shout out great. to Chalk Community. Yes. Um, Jaja Chen. What's the guy's name? Like, Devin. Devin. De- Devlin. Devin. 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 Yes. Okay. And I just found out y'all had some food too, so I need to go there and get me some pot stickers and this lavender jasmine tea, darling. It was delicious, darling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and when we get to, when we get back, we're gonna learn more about Adrian and Cece's relationship. Obviously, I want to know more about how you built your relationship with your dad, of course. Um, how Cece played the role in keeping you guys in a strong, faithful relationship, and much more. Oh, and I, I wanted your opinion about being an educator. We're gonna get into this for sure. Okay. <laughs> so make sure you guys stay tuned here onto the Public Affair. Don't go nowhere, darling. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this really great episode of the Public Affair with Adrian and Cece Pajardo. Before we continue, I definitely want to use this opportunity to give a shout out to just a few more of our sponsors of this episode of the Public Affair. This episode is brought to us by Juliana Resendez with JR Renovations. She's a general contractor specializing in commercial businesses and residential homes, darling. She's a true queen leveling the playing field in a male-dominated industry. Follow on Facebook and Instagram at JR Renovations and call the number on the screen. That girl is the epitome of giving back to her community. I love that woman so much. Thank you for all you've done for me in the Public Affair. I'm so happy that we got to build a friendship and reconnect your amazing girl. Thank you. Of course, the Bandas Hauling Service with Julian and Ana Banda. They rent dump trailers. You fill it up and they haul it away in case nobody else wants to come and get it because they're being lazy. No shade. And they also do junk removal and tree brush removals and haul cars in and out of town. Your car breaks down. He says, I'm going to be there in 20 minutes. He's there in five minutes, girl. He's going to beat you to it. Book now with the number on the screen to Julian and Ana Banda. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of the Public Affair with Bandas Hauling Service. Truly appreciate you guys. Oh, of course, the Takisa Palacios and Starving. Onisimo and Palupe Palacios. They provide delicious and affordable tacos for any event. Meat choices include carne asada, pollo, chorizo, pastor, barbacoa, uh, and don't forget the aguas frescas. The flavors include limonada, horchata, piña, melon, jamaica, and tamarindo. They also provide all the plastic wear. Book now with the number on the screen. Definitely affordable. Definitely worth rolling around in. I love me some Takisa Palacios. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Ooh, of course, the alleys drive-in with Alexis and Diana Rivas. They're a convenience store located where the old Kobe's is in South Waco, 2105 Dutton Avenue to be exact, darling. Stop by for delicious snacks or a cold drink. If you need beer for a party or for yourself, they have a huge freezer stocked with a wide selection of ice cold beer. You can order from the kitchen too with a delicious selection of food to satisfy your appetite or to go with that delicious ice cold beer, darling. Stop by this monumental and convenient spot today in South Waco. Oh, and they have enchilada Friday. Get it with the pig's feet. Get it with the pig's feet. I know it sounds gross, but it's really not. Whoever <laughs> said pig's, pig's feet goes with enchiladas was right. All right, they were absolutely right. It's delicious. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. And of course, to Elite Barbershop with my boy Sid Rodriguez located on Hewitt Drive. Call now with the number on the screen to book or download the Cut app and walk-ins are welcome as well. They also have Marcus Guerrero, Chris Reyes, Santos Cordova, David Rodriguez, Isaac Chavez, Clint Fletcher, and Isai over there making you look super snackish and as snackish as I have for more than 110 episodes of The Public Affair. Can you believe we said that? Goodness gracious, and they've been it since the beginning. And congratulations to you as well, Sid. That 2022 Back to School Bash was awesome. I love being a part of it. Thank you for having me a part of it. And thank you for being a longtime sponsor of The Public Affair. All right, guys, we're going to get right back into it. One of my favorite couples is here, Adrian and Cece Fajardo are in the building. Adrian's back for part two, darling. Let's go. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I, is, is it weird watch, watching me do that? Is that no, I always it's, wonder no. what it's, like, what it's <laughs> like on the other end. I'm just like impressed. Yeah, no, oh, I'm impressed. You. I'm like, how's he do that? I've done commercials for um, on the radio. I was on the radio yeah. for seven years. You know that. I don't do that yeah, anymore. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. you know, just side note, I was telling somebody, I, I can say it now because I don't work anymore. One time I had to record a Dunkin' Donuts commercial and I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I was drunk. They aired it for like seven weeks. <laughs> and it was the most lit commercial ever. I can say it now. Again, nobody ever suspected a thing. That's how professional I am. All right? Wow. Like, yeah, I didn't slur my words or nothing, but every time I heard it on the radio, I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe they actually heard that. Yeah, yeah sorry. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, welcome back. <laughs> Just pick it up from there. All right. You know what? Um, so before we left, I, I really love that you guys got to go into, like, the deeper parts in your relationship and all that. I think, you know, it's really great to hear that you guys are both, like, imperfect, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, And that you guys had your own little insecurities and struggles. Because when I look at you from the outside looking in, they're just the perfect couple. You know what I mean? That are faith driven. They look great. They're, they're great together. But you guys went through the same thing that a lot of people go yeah. through. So. Yeah. And there's still stuff we can work on. Yeah, yeah we for still sure. Have our, what's our the what's the main like what what's the main mold <laughs> that keeps it all together for you guys? God, God, right? <laughs> God. Yeah, no, I think that that's so great when yeah. I seen, like you said, when CC was starting to wake up and read mm-hmm. her Bible every morning. That, and it was to the point where, like, hey, Adrian, 
I got to have my time with God. Okay, and I'm okay. like, dang. Well, but I, I understood <laughs> it, though. Yeah. I'm like, man, that's that's great because I know the Lord is going to love her way more and way much deeper than I could ever love right. her. Right. So is that when you take the baby outside and take her for a walk and then let her have time with God? Well, you know what? I, I think I need to work on that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I need to work oh, on that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I can work on that. That's teamwork right there. For sure, yeah. 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 This is definitely probably like the biggest, not I was going to say obstacle, obstacle. Like the biggest test in y'all's relationship is being new parents, right? I think that's for anybody who becomes new parents um yeah. i wonder you know for you I, i've heard that um you know obviously women go through postpartum you know what i mean mm -hmm. but what about for the men did you ever have your own insecurities as a guy like in, as a guy's point of view like as a father you know what i mean man um, uh thankfully i didn't and, mm -hmm. I, and i know there is some men that do go through that but i'm so glad that i had um i think communities is important yeah. so i've always had and continue to have like community support yeah from people that i could reach out to and they could speak life into me and so I'm so glad for my brothers that are able to do that. Too. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, okay, for sure. You know what? I, I kind of wanted to talk to, well, mainly you, but, you know, I definitely want your perspective as well. You know, um, I think when you came on the show the first time, was your dad still, was Homer still incarcerated or he had just got out? He, I think he just got out. He had, like, he had, because he was fresh out. Because I think when he came on my show, he was just barely three months out. Yeah. So yeah, he, something I, like that. It, yeah, he was just probably fresh out. Yeah, I remember because he had an alarm that went off in the middle of the show. He's like, I gotta go. And oh, I was yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I guess I gotta cut it short. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah. Well, he doesn't have to go through all that anymore, right? He's No, he I does. Guess. And he actually got off probation back in February. And so. I really am happy for him yeah. and you guys. I really am. I really am. Yeah. I think that's great because his story was so riveting and just. I want you to go back and watch it again <laughs> because it was just so crazy. Like the things that you guys had went through the last 15 years and it's leading me up to my question, you know, with him being out of your life. Cause again, I recorded with you first and then him a month or two later. Um, how did you work on rebuilding your relationship with your dad after he was in jail for 15 years? Right. He, yeah. He yeah. was in jail for 15 years. So you guys years. obviously were not close. Yep. Yeah. And we, we were close, but it was close to the point where it would be off and on. And so there'd be times where he didn't call for like seven or eight months mm -hmm. or even five to six months. And it would be so hard to keep and keep trusting in his word. Hey, Adrian, I'm going to come home. All right, man, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Right. I'm like, man, I don't know if I believe. It's hard when you ain't heard from him seven months. Okay. And, and it's like, man, I don't know if I believe in that. So there was a sort of point where I just didn't trust his word. I didn't I didn't I didn't really see him as a father anymore. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see him as a father to my sister or be a father to my brother, but not mm. a father to me. Mm. And so when he got out, it was to the point where I got real depressed when he was coming home. Oh, really? I actually, when you're feeling, when you, when you, when somebody's coming home, you, you think you'll get excited, but okay. I really fell into a deep depression because it still was gonna, he was still gonna have to do his job and build his trust to be right. able to build a relationship with me again. Yeah, for sure. And so uh, it was really just seeing his daily life these next few months after he came back home. Oh, okay. And I was like, man, is he, is he really about it? Is he is he really about the man that he said he was in prison? Right. Is he gonna be to someone else? Okay, right, because a lot of people will go to prison and come out and still follow up with the same lame ways you know what i mean and it didn't seem like in homer's case that that was the kids i've been in prison 15 years i'm trying to come out and party yeah. <laughs> you know that's what i'm trying to do you know what i mean yeah. but so it's it's crazy i would love to have him back on the show and talk because now he could probably stay the whole time but you know, yeah. no but you know honestly so uh, were you kind of putting him through like the self test of okay let's see if he's going to come out continue to mess up party all that mess or let's see if he's going to really try and rebuild there was a relationship with his family. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I, I kind of was testing him out and seeing. It, it's just basically like how I'm going to mentor another kid at my school. Mm. I'm still building that relationship, and they're still trying to trust me. Right, right. And so the same thing with my father. And and it was really hard for me to lose my pride and say, man, I, I don't want nothing to do with him. Mm. I don't want him to provide for me or buy me anything. Yeah. But until I was like, man, you know what? I'm going to give it up to God. Okay. And I am going to be submissive to his leadership in my role. And right. Being a father to me. Yeah. And so it took time, but I finally let him go. And I remember yeah. me and Cece going to Arkansas and that was a time when we were in the woods. And I remember it just mm. feeling like it was therapy. And I just felt like, man, this is a strong pull to really just let my dad be my dad. Okay, gotcha. And if he wants to provide for me, even though he didn't provide for over these 15 years, you know what? I'm going to let him do it because okay. it's going to empower him right. to be the father that God has called him to be. Okay, got you. Yeah. So, uh, Cece, I wonder, you know, from your perspective, like, you know, your husband's dad's about to come out of jail 15 years. You probably never met him. You know, you're probably unfamiliar with the situation. So what was your perspective on the whole thing? I mean, did you push Adrian to build a relationship or were you just kind of letting it go on, like, to his decision? Um. Yeah, really just his decision. Mm -hmm. I had met Homer once, but um, just 
our conversations, like mine and Adrian's, and then mm-hmm. just getting to know him, like I could tell that um, God did change his heart. And okay. he, he was, um, I, his word was, I mean, real. Yeah, yeah his word yeah. was real. Yeah, okay, I got you. Yeah, well, it's like, and like I just said a minute ago, like a lot of these people come out of jail and, you know, what do they call it? They sing it, what is it, the jailhouse blues? Is that what it's called or something like that? Where for like the first two weeks, they're all about God and stuff like that. Yeah. And they go right, right? And they go yeah, right yeah. back to the, their old ways yeah. and stuff like that. It's, and so, yeah, it's very easy to. And I think yeah. that, but I think also too, Andrew, is that there's a lot of prisoners who, don't have the same family support that my dad had. Mm. And so there was a lot of family that was keeping him accountable and saying, hey, yeah. look, man, you cannot, because it's, it's something called recidivism where, mm. you know, prisoners are more likely to go back to prison because when they come out, they don't have nowhere to go and uh, they have a, they have a record yeah. and it's like, they can't get a job or they can't go provide for them. So they're like, well, I'm gonna go back to prison because that's mm-hmm. taken, I'm taken care of. Right, right. I, you know what, you know what I thought was cool to, I felt, I, me and your mom are friends on Facebook yeah, yeah. as well. And um, I got to shout out to her. Um, mm-hmm. If this part is, if this, just disclaimer, this next part, you want me to take it out, just tell me. Yeah. But um, I, I remember seeing, I always wanted like her perspective as well. You know what I mean? I gotta have her on the show. But, um, <laughs> you know, I remember she made a post this one time that said, I'm just so grateful that I, like me and I, I, your father's married or getting married or whatever the two. And, yeah. you know, obviously they had not seen each other for a long time or whatever. She's like, I'm just glad that everything is just like, everybody's cool with each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I thought that was like a really yeah. cool thing to see because obviously, you know, I mean, if your husband's in jail for 15 years and then he comes out and he's not with you, it's like, psst, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I wonder what it was like for your mother, like for your whole family to deal with something like that. And you know what I mean? It was very hard. Yeah. And it's, and it's very hard for my mom because it was really her that was really keeping that relationship alive because yeah. she would take us to go see my dad and she, sometimes she would spend her whole rent money yeah. just to take us to go see because she wanted us to have a father. Yeah, for sure. And so my mom put in a lot of work and mm. she did a lot to be able to keep that relationship alive. Yeah. And so it was very hard for her, but it's very... It was very, it's a very strong statement that she said, I'm grateful. Yeah. And that's, and, and a lot of people can't say that. No. But she said that, and, mm-hmm. and, it's, and that's an inspiration for me. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, it was just, it was like a sense of redemption. Because like, she went through her own stuff too. We talked about it on the show. Yeah. Right. Right. Where she was drinking heavily, if I, if I recall mm-hmm. correctly. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. I mean, she, like we had everything at one point. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And now we've got nothing. You know? So yeah. I think, I just think, I'm just really proud of your family just for everything that you guys have had to endure and where you guys are on the, you guys all have seen like a really good head on your shoulders. You know yeah. what I mean? Your dad looks great. Your mom, I've never met her, but she, I follow her on Facebook. She looks great too. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And I met your dad's wife. Obviously, like I said, we have the same foot doctor and she was very, <laughs> she, I have to, girl, I have to apologize. You know, she walked into the doctor and said hi to me like we've been best friends. And I, yeah. I did not know who it was until I saw Homer and I was like, oh, this is his wife. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it happens to me a lot now, Adrian. Like, I feel, yeah. I'd be feeling bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, maybe she watches the show. Hey. You're famous. <laughs> yeah. 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 Whatever. All right. You, you know what? Um, okay. So, um, I wanted to get into you guys, get into it with you guys about, uh, you were both educators. I mean, you're a stay-at-home mom now, and then you're doing something different in the school. Yeah. Okay. And so I feel like, personally, the state of education has changed drastically mm-hmm. in the years. That I mean, we're relatively the same age. You know what I mean? Uh, what is y'all's opinions on the state of education in 2022? Mm. <sighs> I'll be honest, because you're a stay-at-home mom now, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, like, seeing my, my coworkers going back, it's like, man, yeah, I do kind of miss it, you okay, know? Okay, okay. Um, but I, I just feel like there's so many issues with mm-hmm. just how the state of Texas chooses to do some things. And, okay. Um, one uh, being the standardized test. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. I don't think it's one test fits all. Okay. Um, I mean, thinking, thinking about the kids with learning disabilities mm-hmm. or um, just, you know, mental health issues yeah, or sure. low, lower income neighborhoods. I, I don't know. It just doesn't seem fair to me. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, I, and that's the reason why I'm not going back into the classroom is because I failed my content test. Oh. And so it my teaching career was based upon a test what, what, what does that mean your content test so right? when you become a teacher uh, you're, you got your four-year degree when you get your bachelor's degree right. but you, you still have to take it 
like three three tests to be able to still be a teacher. The four year degree isn't enough. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I, right. I went to school. Okay? <laughs> and but you paid thousands letting, of dollars. Aren't they letting some people be teachers with no degrees now? Is that is that what's going on? I'm pretty sure they're going. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Before shortage. before I don't they know. sue me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, I can't get sued. Okay, but that's that, and this is where CC. I was never a great test taker. I'm not. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. And so when I was taking this test, I'm like. It was so boring. <laughs> I was like, dude, I, imagine how the kids feel. What is the content? That, like, do they ask you it's, to do your ABCs in Spanish? Or like, what do you yeah. <laughs> Basically, it's, it just shows that you know what you're about to teach. Oh. Like, you know it yourself so that you can teach it. Well, we all know that two plus two equals four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah there's and, some hard stuff on there. There, there, oh, is, wow. uh, there is very hard content on there. And okay, it's, okay. And there's stories that I don't even... I don't even understand those stories because I don't, I was never raised in those environments to mm, hear those stories. Okay. So the same stories that are being told in those content tests are being told in the standardized testing. And so a lot of my kids don't understand those stories yeah. because they don't know those stories. Yeah. There's a they lot of know. words that they're, they're just, it's just going right. to go in one ear out the other because okay. they've never been exposed to those words. Right. So it's like, we're talking about like the extensive vocabulary used yeah, in the content. Yeah, like so test. we have to okay. expose them. We have to teach them these skills. Oh. It's it's all just fitted to a test. But I didn't know I teachers know. had to. I thought you guys just got the degree and go apply for the job. Like, no. yeah, but look, I went to Baylor. I'm a qualified teacher now. You know what I mean? I mean or hey, I worked at Burger King and now I can teach too. First grade. <laughs> it, it, it's like, and then you have to pay for those tests. We it comes out of our pocket as teachers. Aren't y'all even not even making nothing as teachers? <laughs> <laughs> no, excuse me. But Mike was a teacher, right? Mike, Mike was a teacher my, my producer was a teacher too at university high school right? yeah. you taught computer right you were making shit that's why you do this now <laughs> right exactly okay. no so so you have to already pay for the test like yeah. wait hold up this is i have more questions i need to add them. <laughs> okay wait okay so so you failed your content test yep okay and so i mean did that strike a blow for you we just kind of relieved like well, i don't want to do this anymore anyway like well it, it did strike a, I, I was very discouraged at first mm -hmm. and I, while i was taking a test like i said i said man this School is not boring. Yeah. I, I had so much fun with my kids doing projects, mm -hmm. doing all kind of things to be able to help them critical thing. You made that video that went viral. Man, yeah. yeah, that was and cute. That, and that was, it was a great turnout, but mm -hmm. it's like, man, our kids are not going to be able to expand their critical thinking skills if mm -hmm. we just solely focus on the test. Okay. It's because not a lot of kids are able to take that test. They're not, they're not good test takers. No. They're not. Yeah, they just... Um, this past weekend, our eight-year-old nephew was like, I'm nervous about the star test. Yeah. It's like, dang, like you're already stressing about okay. that. <laughs> you should be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I failed my, stand, my state test in high school like nine times. Like my, I think oh, it was wow. my science one oh, wow. and my math one six times. I couldn't walk the stage because I failed that test. Wow. They kept that from me. Yeah. Wow. And then I had to go while well, everybody was, oh, I, oh you guys, I, I graduated from Midway as well. 2009 yeah. and i remember the night of graduation girl i was working <laughs> wow. I was like i was working on how these go shout out how these goes and i just remember going to the bathroom crying because That's i was tough. Oh, yeah. eight o'clock rolls i'm supposed to be walking the stage with the, the people i went to school with and they were like no you you just they take stuff like that away from you yeah. because you failed that test my grades were all right you know what i mean i failed i passed everything but they were just like no that's one of the requirements to walk stage you can't do it and i just i remember went through it because that's yeah. a once in a lifetime experience yeah you know what i mean so um what, what about yeah. you and the content test though i mean do you guys think they should just take that away i think that's a little bit expensive for you guys has that always been a thing or um yeah I it has so. always I been think has, um i mean i i did pretty well on all of mine my subject areas and mm. then esl and so but i've always been a good test taker oh okay, okay. i yeah Test taking is oh, okay. I like tests. Uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> you, not so much. You know what? Um, I think it's fair to say that you guys in, in the education field, you worked with mainly inner city kids. Is that mm -hmm. is yeah. that is that fair to say? Um, do you guys did you find a lot of challenges in that? Um, you know, teaching kids from like these types of backgrounds because a lot of inner city kids obviously they come from broken homes and you know um, are exposed to a lot of things when they're very young. So like like you were just saying, they're not like paying attention. You know what I mean? Did yeah. you guys like deal with a lot of challenges in that? I think me and Cece have two different uh, perspectives on that. So go ahead and talk oh, about yes. your school. Um, yeah, well, I actually learned um, a lot, like, I guess just background, their background okay. just from being with him. Oh. So um, he taught me a lot of just how they would um, 
respond or react Mm or um, what they've gone through. Just so that was good to just learn from Adrian. But um, I would say just um, behaviors are a little different Mm -hmm. compared to schools in the suburbs or, you know, um, my, I guess, girl, being at Midway, we didn't have, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it wasn't, it wasn't really all that much going on. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's time. I feel like now it's a lot more diverse in terms of, the yeah, type, I think so. The yeah. Type of environments that are going on there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I just know that when I was in elementary, the mm. stuff, the kids weren't, um, behaving like i guess how they are now like cursing and yeah like and twerking in the bathroom and stuff like <laughs> inappropriate though, yeah. Yeah, yeah inappropriate, inappropriate stuff, stuff, stuff yeah and now they have the phones and the instagram yeah, yeah my, my little they're cousin exposed to so much it's crazy yeah. right they're exposed yeah to that. how do you do you do you find it difficult to block them from that negative exposure i mean or is that even your job to do that do you know what i mean yeah no i think it just really depends on your relationship with them okay yeah. and that's what we've been that's what we've always said like if you don't have a relationship with them or if you're you're treating them a certain way Mm -hmm. um already labeling them as bad or um, oh okay you know like that's that can do you find a lot of teachers guilty of that um it's okay to say i think well (laughs) i think i can't i i have been too so um it's very easy to just think of just see this kid as Mm -hmm this label or whatever okay. you know so. like he's a, you're already going to be bad and you know yeah i'm, I'm going to treat um, you as such or i'm not going to give you the opportunity to be a good kid is that fair to say um or? yeah or even just like just already having these set expectations of how this kid's going to be in your class oh, okay. um, like you have to just get to know these students for yourself oh, for and sure and i think that's and when you talk about inner city you t- i think the narratives on inner city kids is what destroys the kids. Mm-hmm. It's those narratives that say they can't do it or they're they they act a certain way. Yeah. When that's that's false. Yeah, you, yeah. When you go in and sit there and you listen to those stories and when you go in there and sit there and you believe in those ch- kids, mm-hmm. then they're gonna perform for you. They're gonna do whatever it takes to be able to get the job done. But okay. it's just that perspective that you have to change yeah. on the kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got you. Yeah. Did you find more of an advantage? Um, dealing with inner city kids since you kind of grew up in the same environment or yeah it gave me a huge advantage and that's something that a lot of teachers didn't have right right but when i came from my story i understood and so um you know when the parents will come in they say my kid is struggling they're behind in their reading scores or they're single moms well i got to encourage them and say hey look I went through the same thing. For sure. But that don't give up on your child. I can't, I was struggling in sped classes, but mm. I still made it out. Wow. And so it kind of gave them, it gave them a lot of hope. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I, you know, it, was, it goes back to um, my question about the, you know, them being exposed to a lot more now. You know, they're, like at the cell phone. they're not even taking up cell phones in school no more these days, are they? Like, um, it, it depends on the policy and you know? the teacher, but. Um, <laughs> they they can Doesn't depending it make, on the school. Why yeah. were we taking? Up, why were we getting our phones taken up? And we couldn't even do nothing on them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, ever think, yeah. you ever think about that? Like we, we didn't have the internet on our flip phones. So why were we getting our phone? Like what were we doing on our phones? <laughs> that, you know. And but no, because my I have a, a younger cousin who um, she lives out of the city, and um, her and her little friends are always in the bathroom. You know what I mean? Mm. On Instagram, dancing and stuff. They take your ass to class. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, goodness, I, I wonder, um, you know, with the advantages, do you feel like you guys were ever, ever able to impact? Like, did anybody ever come up to you like a child and say, you know, you really changed my perspective on things? Or is it too early to tell that young? You know no, what I mean? I think um, Adrian did really well at that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was more focused on... Test were you, were scores and okay. yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. the school, the content. But he was really good at those relationships. Okay. If you want, but I think that you know one thing that I I focused on really b- alive was it's it was not just on me. It was on me and the parents mm. and the community. Mm. Okay, so it was a holistic approach where we all work together and so the kids saw that i was in their local community they saw when i was in their apartment complex i went to the people's they all went to their front door if they didn't answer the phone i said hey look your child is doing this okay and so they saw that all like he's gonna come to my house oh oh, you was gonna yeah yeah so it (laughs) it, it really inspired them like man he's he's gonna he's gonna really do what he says he's gonna do and so i think that they that they knew that i was not gonna give up on them Mm. at such a young age they understood that wow Mm -hmm. and so it really 
really I know I've seen life change happen mm-hmm. within that classroom. That that's really great. So I mean, but now you're gonna go back and continue working there, just not as a teacher. And it's hard to say what you're doing now. Well, <laughs> I think that my main focus when I go back is I can't me by myself. I can only do so much. Mm. But if I was to equip ten other me's, if I was to equip more leaders, yeah, it will be will have a bigger impact. I got you. So that's my main goal. Do you guys think that used individually as educators can change like what's going like you were just saying about the, a lot of the satisfaction that you're having with like the state of Texas in terms of like the standardized testing and stuff? Does do teachers have that voice to change that type of narrative or to change that type of, you know, thing going on? I think together um, we can. Um, uh-huh. It's just some people are sellouts, huh? <laughs> there are some people are sellouts, right? They're just there for the money, <laughs> right? Are some teachers just there for the money? And then I mean, what money, right? Like, <laughs> what, what, what eighteen dollars an hour? Like? <laughs> no, I don't think it's that. I think it's just, um, just um, we just conform to okay, something okay. rather than like standing up for something better. It's just mm. like, oh, this is just how it is, type thing. Do you, Do you eventually want to go back, or? Um. Maybe, <laughs> maybe one day. Uh, okay, when they stop doing content. I really, yeah. <laughs> okay. No, um, I really miss the kids. Yeah, That's, yeah. So I am going to uh, be in Stars Book Club. Oh. So my mom and I are going to do that. And so that's basically just um, empowering the kids through reading and oh, meeting with a group of kids once a week. And so I'm hoping oh, I can nice. see some of my some of my past students. Yeah, I'm really sure. happy. Yeah, that, well, that's good. That's good. You know, I OK, so I just had a teacher on here, um, a coach, Matthew Ardonis. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. So um, it was his second time on the show as well. Yeah. And um, he talked a lot about um, he dealt uh, really horrible with alcoholism. Uh, um, to the point where he was like, he, he said it on the show, like in the middle of school, like during lunch, he would go drink. You know what I mean? It was bad. And so we kind of shifted into the subject of mental health with teachers and having psychologists on campus, psychologists for teachers. Mm -hmm. Do you guys do they are they not doing that? Or do you how do you guys feel about something like that? Um, Do you feel like the teachers need something like that? They actually hired one for Waco ISD. They hired a counselor for the teachers and it was like a free service or something. I just remember seeing something like that. So, yeah, that is a new thing Mm -hmm. that they started doing, um, which I think. I think the teachers need, right. um, I just don't, I just hope that they can, the district can make a way um, for the teachers to have time to do that. Okay. Um, Cause the, the oh, teachers so, I already feel like have so much time. So much going on. Yeah. So it's kind of, maybe it's just kind of being put in place to say, oh, we have one now. But it's like you gotta go grade and you gotta go teach yeah, and you gotta go, right, you gotta, yeah. so you don't ever have time or anything have you guys ever been exposed to i mean because we didn't even like we talked about it and for somebody like him like he's a he's a coach you know what i mean his his family is a prominent name everything and you never think that the teachers I, I, and after that episode it made me see things through a different lens because it's like we don't run even checking on our teachers mm. you yeah. know what i mean and you guys yeah. got like excuse my language the shit under the stick when it comes to you know really having to um empower students having to motivate them having to teach them because that is your job you know what i mean so did you guys ever have um those types of experiences individually where you were like i need to get away from you know what i mean like i need to see counseling for this or something well i think that it could have gotten to that but i think that me and cc have really been intentional with implement our values Mm. and so that value system was my wife well first off god my wife my kids and then my job comes after all those three other things mm. and then my job comes before those things and i tell it no no matter what kind of raise or no matter what kind of test is gonna i'm gonna sit there and say if it's gonna get in between that i'm not gonna let it happen mm. mm-hmm. and so it was very intentional with with doing that right there yeah and i've seen other educators put putting that a time with their loved ones first yeah. Yeah, and sure. still making it work and um because, yeah, you will lose yourself. Right. Okay. So you you guys do think it's a necessary thing to be having in school. Oh, yeah. Do they have it for kids, too? Or when they, I would... have, they have um, a licensed psychologist, yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Because when I was in student. elementary, I had, I had a psychologist in elementary school. Like, oh, okay. in the school. That was in New York. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I didn't know if they had that here still or whatever. Um, I don't. 
I really don't know too much about that. Oh, I know okay. they have we have counselors, but yeah. you know how do you how do you guys as teachers not let a child's circumstances affect you personally? You know what I mean. So Ooh. I mean, we, yeah, because so because we we mentioned working in inner city schools and stuff like that. So obviously you're not naive to a kid that's probably going through some abuse at home or something like that. How do you not how do you not like react? You know what I mean, like attack a parent or something. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> there have been times where we're just like, man, we want to adopt this kid. You know, really? like okay, it, okay. it does get. I don't know. How would you? What do you I think? Have, and I think that there has been a lot of times where me and Cece would just sit there and cry together wow. because yeah. of what we've seen. I yeah. mean, and but also that like, those situations have really changed us, and it did like a radical change for mm-hmm. we want to. We we need to be here. We gotta be here because sure. we done seen so much. Yeah, yeah. We done experienced mm-hmm. so much. We done seen so much brokenness, but also understanding that we're broken people too. So we're just mm-hmm. walking with broken people as broken people. Okay, got yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. God, that's gotta be tough. Um geez, man. Um okay, well, we are running out of time, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, <laughs> before we go, um, Adrian, you know, you started doing motivational reels on Instagram, I've seen. Okay. Yeah. And and so um what where was the inspiration about that? You seem like to really be um what was the inspiration behind it? <laughs> I lost my train of thought at the team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um so you're asking like what made me want to yeah, do Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I like, think that, you know, I've just been really learning from other people. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's really something that's really been inspiring me is I think, how can I be in it? How can I influence the culture? Mm-hmm. And so that's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to influence the culture. If I could just reach one person, influence one person and that person influences the next person. Yeah. Then I think we're going to see a better world. And so that's, what's motivated me. It's like, how okay. can I better serve, better equip other people? And so, um, I've been invited now to a lot of uh, uh, public speaking events. Oh, really? And so that's just my goal right there. That's my motive. And I think that I just, how can I build uh, mm. more leaders out there in the world? That's what's up. Yeah. Now, now Cece, do you ever plan on doing something like that too? Because like, you seem like a little bit more quieter on social <laughs> yeah, media. You know, it's I all am the yeah. introvert, but... <laughs> Yeah, probably not. Maybe, <laughs> oh it may be in the form of writing, but yeah. he's got the speaking. <laughs> you know, I've become an inspiration too. Can you believe that? Me of all people, I don't know how. Like, I, oh, I really, right. n- nothing that I do is inspirational. I always tell people, don't be like me, unless you're going to have a successful podcast. <laughs> but don't do anything that I do, please. I'm not okay. No, you know what? Just, just like on, I've shared this on the show before. I had a 14. Well, I don't know why kids are watching my show. They, they, okay, that's what I'm saying. They get exposed too much. But I had a 14 year old kid come up to me. Um, just a month ago and he told me you know one day I want to be on your show like because I saw you had a pro soccer player on the show oh, and wow. I want to be a pro soccer Aww. player so bad and one day I want you to interview me and I was like oh wow, wow. <laughs> you know I didn't know what to do I didn't know how to respond like you guys are listen you guys the Fajardos are inspirations people should look up to you yeah. <laughs> you know what hey, I mean you guys, you, you guys are you guys are really well put together um, again I always I always um, I always label you guys as like a relationship based off of faith. You know what I mean? I only took it because that one time I saw you. And then you put, <laughs> you put cinnamon in your coffee. I, I, that's how I know Jesus talks to you. Because <laughs> who ever thought, right? That's how I do it. And so, um, you know, I, I'm just, I just have to say, um, when it comes to being inspirations, when we put ourselves like on, on the media, like what you're doing, you know what I mean? I, I don't think that we get to choose. You know what I mean? So it, it makes me really kind of watch more what I do. A little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> you know, I don't want that fourteen year old boy doing it perfect. But anyway, um, you know what? What what's next for you guys um, as a couple, as moving forward, new parents, or you know, again with your jobs or anything like Ten that? Ten kids. No, I'm just kidding. Yes. Oh wow, <laughs> Adrian, get to work. That was a Set secret. the cameras off. Or keep it on for care. them. Okay. <laughs> I'll leave. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay. You're not kidding. Wait, yeah. whatever. Do you want some kids? Do you want? Uh, no, 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 he no. does. You want ten kids? I want. I want a lot. He wants a lot of kids. What do you want to do with some kids? <laughs> You're gonna have our own classroom. Okay, yeah. I got you. Yeah. Did yeah. you ever buy a smart TV? Just a side note. Yeah. Um, you did. Okay. We got a good TV. You know, when I stood at their house, they were using Google Chrome. I said, "If you don't Google a TV, <laughs> I'm gonna go." Buy oh, we did get a new. We did upgrade. Yeah, yeah, I was like, "What is this? <laughs> what is it? You're, you're the Fajardos. You're not supposed to. What is this, uh, this whole thing? No, no. Okay, 20. so so you want twenty kids, and then what else? <laughs> Are you excited to go back into the school year? I am excited. Okay. I, I'm just really excited about the future, and I think that CC has really been helping me out a lot, uh-huh. and with just everything that I'm doing. And so, there's a lot of exciting things that that are going to be happening in the future. And so okay. um, CG has been a really big supporter in that. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's what's up. And when it starts off with this podcast, <laughs> so thank you for having me. Oh, well, th- I appreciate that. Thank Thanks, you. I, no, I, well, first of all, I want to thank you for coming on to the show. You know what I mean? I really did not think you were going to be down. <laughs> you know, and I've been I've been wanting just a couple teachers on this show, and I really wanted to talk about that educational thing just for a little bit, even though it's not. It's just I feel like it's important to talk about. You know what I mean? So um, it was really a pleasure having you both onto the yeah, show, yeah. Adrian. Of course, always. You know what I mean? I, I appreciate. So much, I appreciate you so much for number one, trusting me to come on to episode six. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I opened up a lot about some pretty embarrassing things in my life that had happened the year prior, and um, I don't regret it. You know what I mean? And I just feel like having a friend like Adrian really allows me to just be okay with ex- like sharing that, you know what I mean? And yeah. so I just got, I really appreciate knowing you guys and having you guys a part of my life even after two years. I'm glad we didn't yeah. lose touch after having Amy yeah. on the show. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. I thank you for opening me, opening your apartment to me. Yeah. Even though yeah. I had to really use the bathroom, but the bathroom was in your bedroom. You were like, holding it that whole time. Girl, <laughs> I didn't want to just walk in. I was, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was terrible. It was I mean, not. I, anyway. <laughs> well, thank you guys again so much for coming on. Um, to every, uh, um, is, did I leave anything out? Do you guys want to share any, one last thing before you guys head out? Or? I think we hit on a lot of we, 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 uh, Stacey, did you enjoy your time? Yeah. Was I wasn't bad, was right? I told yeah. you I was going to keep it PG-13. Yeah, it was good. I did. I cursed a lot on episode six, but I was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. No, thank you guys again so much for watching this episode of the public affair please don't forget to like share and subscribe again to the fajardos thank you guys again so much for coming on you guys look great and many best wishes to you guys in the future and to your daughter and, and all the other kids that you have going on to the future okay? <laughs> if you want to name one of them after me that's by all means okay yeah. <laughs> thank you guys again so that's much true. for tuning into this episode before we go i definitely want to use this opportunity to give a shout out just a few more of our sponsors of this episode of the public affair this episode is brought to us by soco soccer academy with dominic gutierrez and ariana gutierrez remember how fat i was on episode six so look, look at me look at me i'm shredded now okay <laughs> Soko Soccer Academy with Dominic and Ariana located at 3304 Franklin Drive. They offer team small group and individual skills training. They also have elite skills training to make your kid a superb star athlete, darling. Open play on Mondays and Wednesdays for ages 16 and older at 8.30 with Morrow, aka Silly Buns, and it's only $5 to play. Follow on Facebook. I call him Silly Buns because he's short and aggressive. <laughs> on Soko Soccer Academy and on Instagram at Soko Soccer. Do you know him? Who is that? Morrow Maldonado? Oh, yeah. He, he's just yeah. short and busy, right? So I call him Silly Buns because he's silly. <laughs> Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Ball. He was on the show, too, episode 49. Yeah. Okay. It's a hustle child clothing with Blaine Hennig, a clothing brand whose mission is to change the negative connotation of the word hustler. He offers a wide selection of hoodies, hats, and more with the various styles and colors. Clothing is made for both adults and children. Visit hustlechildclothing.com now and shop through Blaine's amazing selection of clothes to Hustle Child Clothing. Thank you so much for sponsoring The Public Affair. Blaine, thank you so much for reaching out and, and trusting me to do ads for you, bro. I really appreciate you. And it's so nice to meet you he gave me this backpack of all these really great hustle child clothing like bands and, and hat is great a beautiful beautiful i love this so much thank you so much of course the jeffrey monday out with boil box and audio home for all your led needs and auto accessories installation of stereos door speakers and audio systems he also specializes in building custom subwoofer for enclosures and much more definitely a jack of all trade and your one-stop shop to get everything done in one roof darling jeffrey put that tint in my car he put the backup camera on my car the auto start in my car the apple play car stereo in my car my whole car is pimped i loved it so much jeffrey monorail thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of the public affair bone for being a long time sponsor of course the fat boy michelana and botano my boy junior banda who provides the best michelana and botana place for yourself or for a party menu of ton of different items including botana bowls chamoy pickles and more locally mm-hmm. operated so make sure you get the best and now that you gotta try it girl mm-hmm. he was in south waco go hit him up yeah okay <laughs> hit up fat boy michelada follow him on facebook at fat boy michelada eat botana and if you want the michelada with um Mineral water, he can make it for you too. I don't know. You guys don't drink, right? No. No, okay, get it with mineral water. It's good. It's just as good. I promise. Yeah. And they put a, he puts a little meal on it. You like shrimp? Yeah. Okay. Cucumber, chips, everything. Oh, get it. Oh, get it. <laughs> you know what, Junior? Let's get it for them. Please call me. I'll pay for it. I promise. <laughs> to Fat Boy Michelin and Botana, thank you so much. And of course, to Jay Petal and Poke with Junior Francis, Thomas Robertson, the entire family. I know you guys know Jay Petal. Yes. Yes. I mm-hmm. love some Jay Petal. Yeah. Provides delicious, savory Japanese crepes and Poke Bowls. They also have handcrafted Thai rolled ice cream for dessert. Choose from the menu or create your own, like I like to do, because I like to be in control. Locally operated at University Park Drive and Hewitt Drive. Order online at jpedaltx.com. To Jay Petal, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of the Public Affair and Junior for being a longtime sponsor. I truly appreciate you. Again, to you guys who continue to watch the show and support, I love you guys. Thank you so much for continuing, continuing, continuing to support me in this journey. And of course, to the Fajardos, I love you guys as well. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. And with my auntie that's finished, don't forget to always keep it between us. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.